To capture CO2 from the air is not science fiction. Green Cap Solutions is doing just that by increasing the CO2 concentrations in greenhouses for increased food production. The difference between this technology and absorption is that GreenCap uses zeolites to capture the CO2. Lars Schustal is the operative CTO of GreenCap, and he is here today to tell you more about CO2 capture by adsorption. Please give him a warm welcome. So, thank you, Evan and uh, Peluna, for inviting me to this conference. So, as Evan said, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk about C2 capture by absorption. And this is a technology which GreenCap has been using to, to capture C2 directly from the air already since 2016. And we started out with, uh, with small test rigs, we went up to proof of concepts, and then to a fully operational prototype which can capture uh, CO2 and inject it into, into greenhouses at Nibio. But what's really stayed the same through this whole process, and what really is the heart of our technology, is this. So this is a small zeolite bead, and it's the absorbent we use to capture the CO2. But just what is a, a zeolite, and how can we actually use it to, to capture the CO2? And that's what I'd like to spend the next minutes trying to explain to you. So I want to start with, with a couple of challenges We're using direct air capture. So of course, there are several technical issues and technical problems, but I want to limit myself to, to the point of view of, of the sorbent. So as we know, the CO2 in the, in the atmosphere is quite dilute at around 400 uh, parts per million. And and for a DAC unit, that means that we need to process an enormous amount of air. And the second challenge is, in order to capture the, the CO2, we need to somehow bind it. And we also need to energy to release it afterwards. And especially for, for green cap, we want to be the best when it comes to energy efficiency for capturing CO2 for direct air capture. So for us, and I think that's this true for, for every. Uh, everyone in this industry is to minimize this energy. So let's start with the with the first uh, with the first challenge. With the it's more to do with the reactive area or the process area. We need to, we need to get a lot of air through, and we need to be able to to capture the, the CO2 and and also to to store it temporary. So what what options do we have? Well, let's let's look at some different different things here. So we have absorption, which is where the molecules actually enters the, the material and, uh, and the volume of the, uh, of the material. So the, the positive side here is that we can use the entire volume and we, we can get a high capacity for, for storing it. However, the reactive area is, is only the surface, which is quite smaller. And if we actually want to have a large surface area, we need to eat, either use a uh, a liquid in a mist form or a gas. And that comes to problems when it comes to containment. Another option is adsorption, where the molecule accumulates on the, on the surface of the absorbent itself. Well, then we could have much lower capacity because we're only working with two dimensions. However, we have a much better reactive area and we, have a so we can use a solid sorbent uh, which eases the, the uh, technology side. So, but what if we can use the, the best of, of, of both worlds? What if we use a, a material which has a, a high surface, like a porous medium? Then we can both have high capacity, and we have a large reactive area, and we also have, we can use the, the solid sorbent. The second challenge I wanted to address was the, was the binding energy. And from a chemical point of view, there really are two options. One is uh, chemisorption, which is basically just a, a, where we have a chemical reaction which involves strong molecular bindings. The second option is to use something called fissiosorption, which is just weak intramolecular forces like Van der Waals forces, and where no chemical reactions are involved. And this is good for us because we, we're not interested in using chemicals either. So is there a candidate which has both of these two properties? 
Well, I already gave you a hint in the beginning of, the, of my talk. And of course, this is the, the zeolite. So what's really is the, the heart of the, of the zeolite is this molecular structure. So this is a, a small model uh, where we build this crystal, and it gives us as an enormous surface area. So it actually has a surface area up to 800 square meters per gram. So that fulfills the first criteria. How about how can we actually trap the, the CO2 then? Well, inside this small pores here, it has a small positive charge, so it's slightly cationic. So, how can we actually be sure that the CO2 will fit inside this pore so we can actually trap it? Well, that depends on the, on the zeolite itself and the size of the molecules. So you can get a lot of different types of zeolites, some with small pore sizes where CO2 doesn't fit, but let's say water actually do fit. Or we can get different zeolites with larger pores where we can get uh, where, where the CO2 can actually fit. So one good zeolite to, to use for CO2 capture is something called zeolite 13X, which is a pore diameter of around 10 angstrom, which is uh, more than large enough to, to fit CO2. However, if you want to, this, this pore inside doesn't just capture CO2, it, cap, it can capture all kinds of molecules. So which one does it prioritize? Does it, does it prioritize CO2 or does it prioritize other elements which is in the air? Well, the problem is it actually want, rather wants to, to attract water. So water is much more strongly attracted to this, to this pore, being a bipole. So in order from highest to lowest priority of the, the, uh, the elements in air, we have water, then we have CO2, and then we have nitrogen and oxygen. So water is going to be an issue which we need to solve. So, what can we do to, to impact the capacity of, of a zeolite? What, what can we do to manipulate the environment such that we can maximize the effectiveness of, of our zeolite? Well, first of all, of course, we want a high-quality zeolite. And as I just said, water is our enemy, so we want to have as dry air as possible. Temperature is also an issue, because as we said, we're, we want to use as little energy as possible to save energy, but that also means if you use high temperature, the molecules themselves have a high kinetic energy, and they can easily be released. So if we decrease the temperature, the average kinetic energy goes down, and we can increase the capacity. The last thing is the partial pressure, or the amount of CO2 in the air. So of course, if you stack, then, that, then this is a given one, it's 400 ppm. However, uh, if we want to use our technology for, for point capture, where we have a higher concentration of, let's say, 4%, the, the capacity of zeolite will increase. So, now that we know a little bit about uh, the properties of, of zeolite, we actually know a little bit uh, to make our own little DAC unit. I'm, I'm going to try to give you a super simplified uh, schematics of how we can do this. So first, we want to do the absorption part. We fill up the zeolite with CO2. So we start by, by sucking in air. We go through a desiccant to, to take out the water. We, we add a cooler to drop the, uh, the temperature down so that we can increase the, the capacity of, of the zeolite. The CO2 gets trapped inside the zeolite, and we get CO2-free air out. Or, if we have a customer which wants CO2 for air, let's say, for instance, a battery manufacturer, which has perhaps a, a high requirement for, for air purity, where the CO2 can, can, uh, can damage their, uh, their, the quality of the, of, let's say, the, um, um, the material, then they can actually buy our CO2 for air as well. So, we continue this process until the, the zeolite is, is filled up with, with CO2. All right, so once this is done, we actually need to, we need to extract the CO2, and then we need to regenerate our, our system. So I'll, I'll split this up in two. For, for the air, it's, uh, to get the, rid of the water, it's quite simple. We, we heat it up, we add heat, we add air, we blow hot, warm air 
through the desiccant, the water gets picked up and we get humid air out. For the CO2, we want to use a more of a, a closed loop because we don't want to, to add any air and any, any uh, other things we can dilute the, the CO2 concentration. concentration. So we add heat, the CO2 gets, uh, gets released, and we can deliver this CO2 to either storage or utilize it like a, a greenhouse or, or other types of industry. All right, so I'd like to spend the next minutes talking a little bit more about our current projects. So at the moment, we have, we have two projects going on. One is at, at Nibiu, and we've already been running an experiment there since uh, 2018, where we've been delivering uh, CO2 to increase the, the, the crop yield uh, inside the greenhouse. As you know, photosynthesis, you have, you require, you require light and you require CO2 water and you, get, uh, and you get sugar. So we've been uh, delivering both the environmental control system, which controls the, the temperature, the humidity, and the CO2 content in the air, and we, we deliver the CO2 by having a, one of our DAC units, which is pictured here. What we're going to do now is we're going to expand the, the, uh, the number of greenhouse cells we're going to use, and uh, Nebu is going to increase the, the concentration of CO2 to see if they can increase the, the crop yield even more and we're going to deliver a, a new uh, DAC unit, which is going to be more energy efficient, and it's going to have a higher capacity. So the first unit we're going to deliver is, is the so-called Z50, which has a capacity of roughly 50 tons of CO2 per year. Hopefully, we'll, we'll finish this project by, by the end of this summer. Our second project is, uh, is at Finnoy. This is a small island outside uh, in, in Ryfylke. And this is a, a major project where we, we have uh, two hectares of, uh, of tomatoes of 22,500 square meters. Uh, and we, they're going to need around 1,500 tons of CO2 per year. So what we're, we're doing now, we're already on a, working with the environmental control system, and we're going to build four large units, uh, DAC units. So this is the so-called Z300, which is going to have a capacity closer to around 400 tons of CO2 per year. We also have some, some future projects. One is uh, CO2 free air. Uh, so I was mentioning a little bit earlier, uh, some customers actually just want, don't want the CO2, they just want the, the, the CO2 free air. And we have, a, we have some plans to deliver a, a kind of a, a scaled-down version of our, of our DAC unit where we, we don't care about the, the air pretreatment and we, we let the customer take away the moisture and take away anything else they want and we just remove the CO2 in, our, in the final stage. So we actually come quite a long while on, uh, way on, the, on this project and we should be able to deliver the first units if, uh, at the end of the year. We're also interested in doing industrial point capture. So if you remember, one of the things which can increase the capacity of our zeolite to capture CO2 is the amount of CO2 in the air. So this, we can use our, uh, our DAC unit for customers who have perhaps a low CO2 content in the air or the, their emissions are quite low and that doesn't make sense to install a, a large CO2 CCS plant. Of course, if we want to use this for, for, uh, for the industry where the CO2 content is higher, we're probably going to need a, a larger uh, CO2 light bed to capture more of the CO2. But we might also have to add uh, pre-treatment, uh, let's say scrubbers or, or that sort of things to take away contaminants like, uh, like uh, SOX or NOX. And we believe we can, uh, we can um, build this kind of units already uh, next year in 2023. Finally, we also have some uh, large future ambitions, and that is to, to build large-scale DAC farms, uh, capable of capturing up to, to megatons of CO2 per year directly from, from the atmosphere. So we want our technology to mature a little bit before we do this, so maybe we're going to use a second or third generation of a, of a larger 
dark unit, the, the SAT 300. We're going to start small, build a couple of units, let the technology grow, and eventually get up to, to the megatons, which is, will be needed if, if, the, if the panel is going to reach the, the climate goals. So, as you see, we have so quite a lot of exciting projects going on here at GreenCap, and we're really exciting, excited about the future. So, I'm going to take a couple of questions and leave you with a, a small quote. Thank you. Thank you, Lars, and thank you for bringing down into the details on the technology. I got a question from Royan Habola online, and the question is that zeolites have been around for a very long time. Yeah. And it's always been a problem with water. Yes. And they're also very sensitive to, to water, so you need to remove pretty much all the water. Mm -hmm. uh, that comes with costs as well. Yes. So how does your technology solve this problem? Well, that's a very good question. And so we actually patented uh, a technology to, um, to remove the water quite energy efficiently. So we're going to use uh, something called uh, desiccant wheels or entropy wheels, which are large wheels filled with uh, actually uh, another type of zeolite called uh, 3A, which is too small to capture CO2, but large enough to capture water. So when you have the incoming air, it goes through, uh, we have a stream, the water gets attached to the surface, and the CO, well, less water gets on, on the other side, and we, we process the whole thing and goes through the, the, uh, the CO light, capture the CO2, and on the return side, we have completely water-free air, and it picks up the water once it crosses the other side of, of, the CO light, uh, of this uh, desiccant wheel. So we, it doesn't require any cooling or heating. It just, it just wheels, it picks up the, the moisture and brings it out on the other side. Thank you very much, Lars. Thank you very much for the questions. And uh, we'll continue the discussion both online and here.